this is a trap and the aim of today's video is to expose this trap i will be happy when i'll be happy when i get married i'll be happy when i land my dream job i'll be happy and content when i buy my dream house i'll be happy and satisfied when i finish my studies i'll be happy once i get the promotion i'll be happy once i get that contract i'll be happy once i do this once i do that and the third this applies to every single person in life to the student that is in school, to the professional that is successful in business and is looking for new opportunities, and even to the person that is done with school and trying to build a successful life, it applies to everyone. Sometimes we get trapped in the future and forget to live in the present, and then we base our happiness in the future. It's a concept that I call postponing your happiness to a future time and almost like living a demotivated life right here because you are ambitious to get to that point that you are looking forward to and you forget that right now you've abandoned your life your relationships you've abandoned things that would get you to a place of living a fulfilled life even now i believe that you can live a happy life a joyful life a good life right here even when you don't have everything that you are meant to have or that you want to have so whatever win looks like to you let's look at this trap now happiness is actually based on happenings which means things happening the way you want it to happen for you to be happy and if you are basing your happiness on a future ambition or a future achievement sometimes you may not actually get that true happiness that you're looking for in those things the question is have you ever chased after a goal believing that once you achieve it it would make you truly happy but it did not maybe you achieved that milestone but failed to find the happiness and peace you were expecting this is something in my story that i got to discover it's an arrival fallacy i call it postponing your happiness to a future season or for a future season but got to discover that there is a story on that called arrival fallacy you can check it up arrival fallacy is defined as the belief that true happiness will come from accomplishing the next big thing however more often than not the happiness is short-lived or missing entirely so then i realized that it is this arrival fallacy or what I call, I'll be happy when that gets people trapped in a place of desperation. So desperate, oh, I'll be happy if I can get married or when I get married, I'll really be happy. Or oh, when I do this, when I do that, I'll really be happy. And sometimes we get to have those things. Oh, I thought to myself, when I get a job, I'll really be happy. And I've gotten a job and I realized that getting a job is not the only thing. It's about getting a job that helps you to be financially free or getting a job that can actually serve you. I'm grateful for the job, first of all. But the income is not something that can sustain me and help me do some of the things I really want to do. So it's like, oh, I'm happy that I got the job. But then what I expected, my expectation was very high. That true happiness that I expected that when I get a job, I will have that true happiness is not really there. And it's actually different for everyone based on whatever thing they have going on in their life. This arrival fallacy creates anxiety and depression in the heart of people that you become anxious. It makes you neglect the present and devalue your process and journey and be fixated on a destination. When I arrive there, I'll be happy. When I arrive there, when I arrive here, I'll become this. When I arrive there, I'll become that. And most times you get it done. And then it's like, what next? When I get the promotion, I'll be happy. Yes, the transient short-lived happiness is there. You got the promotion. What next? And it's like, you are not living a real fulfilled life at the moment because you're always fixated on this arrival fallacy. When I get this, I'll be happy. The aspect of social media that shows the highlight reel without showing the real process of people going through things makes a lot of people get in their brain and like, if I can have what that person have, if I can get there, if I can get to achieve this, if I can get to get this done, I'll be really happy. Because you see them posting pictures, looking good and a lot of likes, the body shape and everything, maybe they get to the gym and then walk out, sweat, post the fine picture with their gym dress and you're like, hmm. Julie, I want to give you a way to get out of this rut because you are dissatisfied in your process you are tired of your process you don't even want to walk through the process again it's as if this process will be skipped like you're watching a youtube video and then an ad comes on and then there's a place for you to skip the ad and then move to the next thing but once you see those ads that is like you cannot skip so frustrating but that is the process that you get to experience when you are having an arrival fallacy you are like i need to get to that destination so that i can find my happiness and that destination that you want to get to might be that your happiness is not even there 
and you feel like if you can skip this process right now you will get there and you forget that you actually need this process to have a well-rounded life christ jesus showed us a way out of this rut of arrival fallacy and he lived the life his purpose of coming to earth was to die to save us from our sins but if you discover in Jesus' life, he was never in a hurry. He was never trying to rush the process and let me just get to the cross and get this done so that I will be done here on earth and move on. He enjoyed every meal. He enjoyed every moment. He enjoyed every conversation. He took his time. He worked with people. He had friends. Enjoyed his moment living on earth. Enjoyed his process even before he got to the cross. Now by saying Jesus enjoyed all of this, shouldn't he have enjoyed because he was on earth? You have to know that he is God fully God and fully man. So he's coming from a place way higher, perfect than here. But when he came here, he was not in a hurry to leave this place and move up to heaven because he needed to be a savior and high priest who is touched with the feelings of our infirmities to see us lose people, to see us go through losses and grief, to see us be in a place of dissatisfaction and all sort of emotions. He was there. He took his time to go to a wedding, to go to places and had to understand being a human. That is how he can be a savior that can understand us, that can know how we feel, that can relate with us. That was his process, but he did not try to skip the process to get to a destination of dying in the cross. And even at the cross, scripture talks about him that for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Scripture says in Hebrews 12 verse 2, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus did what? He endured the cross, despised the shame, which means he went through the process. So we don't have to skip the process of our present life because we are tired of it. We need to walk through the process looking unto Jesus. How did he walk through this earth? Being God, knowing that what is even this with these humans? But he could walk with us. He could have friends. He could enjoy meals. He could sit with the woman at the well. Imperfect woman. We have to come to a place of realizing gratitude is something to embrace. Unlock gratitude. In Genesis chapter 29 from verse 31 to 35, it talks about Leah. Leah was Jacob's wife, but not the one that Jacob preferred. Jacob preferred Rachel, but he was deceived and given Leah. So now Leah is living with Jacob and living an unhappy life. She is now thinking to herself, if I give birth or when I give birth to my husband, I will be happy. And God opened her womb and she gave birth to the first son and said, now I've given birth to a son. He named, she named him Reuben and said, my husband will love me. And the husband did not love her. She now gave birth to another son and named him Simeon. And said, my husband would love me because I'm giving him another male child. And the husband did not love her still. She gave birth to another child, the third one, and called him Levi. And said, by now, since I've given him a third son, he will love me. And it did not happen. Go read this, that scripture. In verse 35, she gave birth to another son and named him Judah. At this point, she realized, I do not have to wait to be happy, to be grateful. Right here and right now. She said, I will praise the Lord. Let me read that passage. Once again, Leah became pregnant and gave birth to another son. She named him Judah, for she said, now I will praise the Lord. And then she stopped having children. She said, I will praise the Lord. That is gratitude. Scripture say, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. Psalms 34 verse 1. I will praise the Lord at all times, not at some times, not when things are good, not when things are perfect, not when I am in a happy mood, not when my seasons are good, but at all times, in good times, in bad times, in anxiety, in grief, I will praise the Lord. God does not change because our seasons change. God remains the same. He's still faithful. Because bad things are happening around us does not mean that God has stopped being faithful. He did not stop being faithful. You should unlock your gratitude and stop waiting for when something will happen that will make you happy because if you're waiting for that when you may never find that true happiness you're looking for your true happiness is found in unlocking your gratitude and knowing that god is your source so with gratitude you have to know that loving your life is first of all about finding happiness in each day as you wake up each day be grateful that you add breath to breathe again that day that you wake up as you wake up every single day be grateful for every single breath that you are taking another thing to note about gratitude is to find blessing in each day of your life find something good to speak about your day 
most times this is how we live you wait you might be having a full day of happiness and joy and good things happening smiles but then just one single act of someone doing something or saying something spoils your mood and you'll be like you spoil my day you don't have to give people such power to spoil your day your spouse or not whoever it is you don't have to give people the power to spoil your day find the blessing not the causes find the blessing not the reasons to be mad not the reason to be angry not the reasons to be moody find the blessing in each day of your life i'm not waiting for something to happen for me to be happy i am happy right now the second point is joy is a cure scriptures in proverbs 17 verse 22 says a cheerful heart is good medicine but a broken spirit saps a person's strength it leads all the way from this gratitude that i talked about but this talks about a cheerful heart a joyful heart and that's what we call laughter is a medicine that's why laughter actually eases us of stress of anxiety and stuff so this is not just about laughter in terms of going to look for comedy to watch look for comedy to listen to it helps but that is not the only thing it's about you finding true joy the bible says that the joy of the lord is my strength when the bible talks about joy here or a cheerful heart it talks about a merry heart a joyful heart a joy that is beyond circumstances a joy that is beyond achievement a joy that is beyond happenings so your joy is not based on things it is based on a knowing and a presence knowing that you have god with you having hope that things are going to be fine having hope that everything is going to work out well having hope that it is well even right now that things don't look good is what gives you joy why is it well because god is with you because you're not alone and that is why you have to find joy and embrace joy and know that joy is a cure instead of waiting to find something to make you happy to achieve something to be happy maybe that joy is what will unlock doors that when you get to places with your beautiful smile you'll be invited for an interview even when you didn't go for an interview you'll be invited and given a position even when you did not go for that because the joy of the lord is your strength the joy of the lord can open doors for you this might be for someone listening right now the third point is contentment is an asset scripture says that godliness with contentment is great gain if you dwell on the thought i will be happy when even when it comes it won't fill your bucket of happiness and make you fulfilled because at the end of the day once you achieve that thing it will be like what next what next are we going to do what next am i going to do to make me happy it's now like a pattern that you have to keep on filling the bucket now i've achieved this i'm happy what is the next thing to achieve so that i will be happy what is the next thing to achieve so that i will have joy that is an arrival fallacy you have to live in the moment and also understand that contentment does not mean that you are settling contentment does not mean you don't have desire to go forward contentment means all you have right now is all you need and you are moving forward for more you are moving forward to get more but then you are not desperate for more but then you have a capacity you're building capacity for more contentment also means that you're not worried over what you don't have right now now that you worried over what you want to have but you are moving steadily and you are actively working moving forward we've seen a lot of people quit living their best life because they are found in this arbitrary timeline of saying i'll be happy when i do this and they set a timeline for themselves only for them to get to that timeline and whatever they expected either do not happen or it happens and does not feel them does not make them fulfilled and they are like why was i even waiting all the while for this maybe there's something else ahead and then arrival file as it comes again and they're like maybe if i achieve the next thing i'll be fulfilled and they keep going and keep going and they don't find fulfillment let's go back to jesus words jesus said refuse to worry about tomorrow but deal with each challenge that comes your way one day at a time tomorrow will take care of itself so instead of worrying about the future what you have what you do not have right now what you want to have stay right here today and do the best you can do do all you can do and trust god with what you cannot do and know that life is going to come out good as much as you're not staying and becoming lazy you're doing the best you can do you're not sitting down and relaxing and crossing your legs and expecting someone to show up for you you're not expecting miracle money to fall from heaven you are walking you're putting your hands to work and the bible says that god will bless the works of your hand so it's a, it's time to actually refocus on god and trust god a day at a time one day at a time focus on the present focus on the journey focus on the lessons focus on the things to be grateful for the three things i've said is unlock gratitude also know that joy is a cure 
and contentment is an asset. These are the things to hold on to so that you will know when this arrival fallacy comes to you as a mindset, you tell yourself, right now, I'll be grateful. Right now, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Right now, I'll be content in whatever situation I find myself. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And I hope that this video is a blessing to you and it's going to change and radically transform your thinking around this arrival fallacy. You can research this word online and learn other things and ways to deal with it if you are really struggling with this mindset because it is a trap. It is actually holding you captive. It's holding you in the present as if you are being caged in a prison because you are not actually living in the present. You are trying to live in a place that does not exist in your brain. Live right here and stop sabotaging the relationships in your life because you are going after an arbitrary timeline of something or an achievement that you really want to get. And that doesn't say be lazy. It just means do not be locked in there. Live and be present each day. Thank you. God bless you.